like in music, you don't, you don't ever stop growing. There's always a way to make something better, make something bigger. My name is Anthony. I go by Chapter 3. I'm an artist. I'm also a producer and music composer. Growing up was tough. It was tough, but um, I wouldn't change it for nothing. I'm from Los Angeles, California. My mom's from Lebanon, my dad's from El Salvador. Like, my dad was a gang member, so we moved around, like, a lot. My mom was very much in, involved in the gang culture herself. We did whatever we could to get by, but um, my dad was a mechanic, and uh, my mom was a teacher growing up. My mom was an R&B singer. I was raised in the studio, and um, that's when I kind of first got my intro to music. Going to the studio with her, she had to lug me around a lot because my dad was doing whatever he was doing, so I had to go with her, and I would sleep on the couches, I'd go around, look at the beat machines, look at the microphones. I was just running them up through the whole studio, going to all the slots. It was, it was a fun time. I never liked school. Um, school was always tough for me to get through. I took the bus a lot, like city bus. I did graffiti. So like hopping on the bus was like part of my daily routine was because I was coming from one side of the valley all the way to the other side of the valley. So I had a chance to, before I got to school, mob all the way from where I was at to school. Uh, mobbing means you, you, get a, you get a backpack, you fill it up with what you need, and you go from whenever you get into the streets till you go home. I, I feel like there's two different types of graffiti. So you got gang graffiti, and you got like graph head graffiti, like people that are gonna spend time on those big pieces of murals that you see. So the reason why I stopped doing graffiti was because I was, I was getting in a lot of trouble. It comes, with, it comes with a lot of trouble, a lot of long nights, you're out all night. Yeah, it becomes um, real chaotic and at the time, I was having my first, uh, my first kid. I knew I kind of had to step away from that, but I loved it so much, I was, I was looking for something to fill that gap because it takes a lot of time to be good at something. I wanted to do something that was just as hard so I, I decided to do uh, beat making. When you grow up in hip hop, because that's, that's what my mom and dad listened to. They didn't listen to like, I mean, they listened to a lot of oldies, but I was raised in like, like hip hop. It brings the elements of hip hop. You, you're watching the videos, you're seeing what, it, what comes with it. You got break dancing, you got graffiti, you got MCing. So you want to be a part of that. It's like, a, it's like a Michael Jordan. When you're a kid, you want to play basketball. You see your favorite uh, your MC or you see somebody you want to be like, you want to imitate it. I always like underground rap. I always like underground rap. My mom was a big East Coast head. My dad was a big uh, West Coast fan. I think one of my favorite groups growing up was Wu Tang. I love Wu Tang, but I don't play anything. I'm not like musically trained in any in any uh, any instrument. It took a lot. It, I had to go from hardware, which is just like an MPC or something like this, to trying to figure out how to make my process faster. Once I started finding what I actually like to use, I, I honed down on that and I didn't go nowhere. It was just me and that thing all night long, every day. And I was by myself for a while and I think I needed that because I needed to focus on just the craft of beat making. So a lot of it's digitally, but like I'll take little things here and there, like I'll go record something from somewhere, I'll make something like that was a snare into a hat. I, I do all types of different, different layers of my stuff. I, I like what I like, and then uh, I just piece it up that way. At that time, just like anybody else, I was trying to build a bass, and I was just trying to make a name for myself as, as far as uh, making these beats be, be heard. I would do beat battles. I would go all throughout Los Angeles, and I would just mob with a couple buddies of mine, and we'll just hit as many beat battles as we could. It kind of opened up like my sound as far as fans were concerned because a lot of these upcoming producers that are around now, they're, they were there. You gotta have like really big, hard hitting beats. So that's what I would do. And every week I would come back, it would sharpen my sword because I was like, man, I, I lost that and I don't, I don't like to lose. So I was like, let me sit here and try to make the best and go back until I started working. Then I started winning. I would lose, I would win, but I gained a lot of friends in the, in the uh, producer community just off of being at, at those battles. So I think that's when you get the most respect, when you play something and they're just like, I didn't know you could do that. So in the beginning, I wasn't really collaborating with nobody. Everything was kind of to myself until I felt like I, I, my stuff was worthy to, to be wrapped on. And then once I felt like it was good enough and people started reaching out, I knew I had something. People would send me links all the time. Hey, check my music out. It was never anything that I was like really like, I really liked or I felt like um, that could work with me. 
And I had a buddy of mine that I actually grew up with uh, doing graffiti and he told me, I, I have a friend, I have a dude that I know he raps. So he gives me his SoundCloud leak and it was thousand. So I reached out to Mario because I was like, man, I really like this dude. And money can't shake me. Uh -huh. If money talking funny, we break money and change things. His rap style was crazy. He was rapping on beats that I like. So when I met Mario, uh, that's pretty much uh, what it's been. It's been just me and him for a uh, well, thousand words. It's been me and him for about eight, seven, eight years nonstop. And it's hard for me to collaborate outside of that because it's just, you never know. You give your art to somebody, you don't know what they're gonna do with it. He's the uncle to my, to my children. So I know when I give him something, he's gonna take it and do the most he can with it. We created like a little collective. Thousand helped out a lot with molding what we have. We chose Doc because he, he was probably the only guy that was doing the art direction. We kind of pieced it up that way. We said, this is where you'll be the strongest, this is where you'll be the strongest, and then we just formed. We have all the right tools. We have access to the whole world. It's just our time. It's like you can go in your room and just pu plug up a microphone and have everything at your at your fingertips. Can't imagine only rapping and capping in verses about Rio. More dedicated but humiliated by drugs and copy came free. We like to touch on what's actually real, you know? But we don't box ourselves in either. We like to have some a little bit of something for everybody. What actually goes on in the world is what kind of pushes me and my team to make what we make. We're more like rebels and we don't really care about what, what people think we're gonna talk, we're gonna say what we say. I feel like my bi biggest inspiration though is my family, my kids, they're different. I know a lot of people say that, but they're different and uh, they push me. They push me to be better. It means everything to put your, your blood, sweat and tears into something and then when, when you play it, you see how it's taken, you know? And when the people like it, it's like, man, this is working. You know, if people don't like it, we go back to the drawing board. Just pretty much keep creating until we get that thing, you know? It could be one song. Just make as much as you can and put out the best you can and then let the people uh, decide. For us, any it, it could be one person, like whatever whatever we could get or gain, it means the world to us, you know? And uh, we respect, we're, we're really respectful people. We wanna be at Red Rocks. We wanna be on the big stage. You know, that's, that's why we do this. We do this to, to be on that platform. We're taking it one step at a time, but the initial goal is to be, uh, to be on the big stage, you know, and have those people and be able to take care of our families off of our music. That's the main goal. As far as uh, we're concerned in, in third world and making what we make, we want to stay 100% organic and we want to build with the right people. You got to play the music, see how people gravitate to it. Everybody's not going to like the music. That's just how it is. Music's uh, subjective. So have good people around you that are going to tell you if something, they're going to tell you the truth. But when you hear the truth from the right people and you take, you take it the right way, that's, I feel like that's how you grow. Like whatever we did on the last project, it has to be better. It, it never stops. So I'm always, I'm always hard on myself. I just take it day by day, you know. I focus on my mental health. I focus on my, my people's mental health around me. You never know what someone's going through. So I feel like just get your mind right and do what it takes to get your mind right. And sometimes you do got to go to the sauna and you do got to put yourself in an ice bath. And, but things like that, it makes you a different person in your mind when you push yourself to do things that are hard that you don't like to do. So I feel like try to just focus on your mental and focus on what's gonna make you feel better. Just sometimes you don't know who you're being a role model to until like, it could be years later where you, you didn't know you were touching people like that. But I try to make the right choices in my day to day. And um, I try to be a good friend and you know, father. I feel like I am a role model, you know, in a sense, but I'm not perfect. I really want to put out more music because when we do put out music, we, we, we feel good about ourselves. We got something special and I want to see what it does in the world. First and foremost, I want to touch people. I want people to feel how I felt when I heard some of my favorite stuff. That's my, my main goal. But you know, I also just want to be able to do good things with good people, just do cool stuff, travel the world, you know, touch people with my music. And yeah, if I could take care of my family with music, that'd be great too. I'm tired of working. I'm chapter three and I'm a creator.